Three, two, one, go. And by my estimation, that means right now I'm at uh, 49, 48, 47, 46. Does that, does that make sense for you guys? Uh, can I do it again? Yeah, now at 40, 40 uh, 39, 38, 37. I'm good, I'm good. All right, you too, Vendetta? Yep. Fantastic. Fiber just said that it's going to be exciting, sir. We're going to take his word for, for, word for it. <laughs> hey, Freiburg, yeah, so Freiburg actually played in this game, and we're going to have to count on Adam not trolling our chat with the incorrect information, but I bet he will anyway. So this is a demo from last night, because we had some huge issues with Twitch, so we decided to cast a demo instead for you guys, so nobody knows the result except for Freiburg, but, you know, we don't even know the result. I had no idea it was going to be two or three maps here. We've gone to a third map with NIP winning quite convincingly on in uh, on uh, in sorry on Nuke. Hellrace is taking it on Inferno less convincingly but still a pretty good performance I'd say from the uh, CIS team and now we're going to go on Dust 2. So welcome to the show everyone. This is the Case King of the Hill cool by Alpenfrina. You are on Room on Fire with uh, myself and also Vendetta and Natu from Encore. So thank you both for joining me here this evening so I didn't have to spend uh, you know too much time alone. Semler is going to be back soon enough but tonight he couldn't join us and now we have Actually, Hellrace is starting on the terrorist side. We'll see. Forest in the middle. Could have actually been a one-tab on Doja, but the angle was wrong, so he just does a bit of damage. And look over at Long. Get right is here. Molotov is actually holding the terrorist back, but he's going to be chased into the pit. Could have easily gone down. He's going to re-peak, and he does get taken out. Piflarin fighting alone against a lot of people, and he misses the shot. He's going to be dropped by Kucha, who picks up a double, and now his reinforcement comes in from CT spawn. NIP actually are in a bad position. I'm glad they didn't go up there. I feel like if they'd gone for it, that could have been horrible. Uh, I'm having a hard time seeing how Hellraisers could potentially lose this round. Especially with Angel and Doja already up on Catwalk. This should be a pretty easy ult for Hellraisers. And they do have a good position. Doja looking into the wall trying to not get flashed, but Angel does go down immediately and then Doja gets flashed anyway. So that doesn't work out too well. It was a nice idea on paper, but in practice it's Forest. different. And Forrest has just picked up two, uh, one kill here. Now they're going to go and find Kutcher Gandalf, or sorry, by Goose. And now Adrian's coming up from behind, which could have been great if his teammates were still alive. And IP are going to retake it and win it. Forrest <laughs> with a triple kill and even the Zeus to celebrate that victory. So, Vendetta, well, you said <laughs> there was no chance. <laughs> no, I said, I said there shouldn't be a chance. You're right, hell. Yeah. So jinxed, man. Yeah, that, uh, I don't know. I, I'm jinxing things after it's happened. Like, I don't even know. <laughs> oh that was God. just extremely poorly played by Hellraiser. No, so. but, but, yeah, I mean, well, at the same time, that one flash at Cat where they got the second kill of the guy that was on Cat, Dojo. that was perfect. Yeah, that was perfect. And then that pretty much opened it up. Uh, Adrenzo, who's backstabbing from long, even him, he got caught out as well. He was sent down to like 7 HP or something, and then Markolov trying to cross over uh, yeah. as they push up short and getting picked off that way easily instead of just trying to buy time for the guys in, in Red Eye. Like, they did so many weird things. I can't believe it. That was it's a sick round, and this run starts off as really well as well. Fri uh, sorry, Fiflaren actually picking up some great C set 75 kills, and um, and then Exist I think picked up a couple of of the last one there. So they only lost one guy in that round, then IP. But Hellraisers, they got the bomb plant and they bought in the third round. Not too big of a surprise here for uh, seeing how it is, Hellraisers. And I wouldn't be too surprised either seeing how they picked up so many smokes that they might try for a B split. Uh, and they will do that. Exist actually just misses the timing by a second. Oh, that's devastating. Could have been really good. He's still going to try and flash his way through, but it's Freiburg outside of B. Oh, but the Famas actually picks up a kill and goes for a second one. Completely flashed and still picks up that double kill. Huge play coming up from Freiburg right now. And in the middle, Doja very close to spotting Exist for the smoke, but not close enough. If they can pick up the kill on Freiburg in this in this B bomb sign, that's going to be big for Hellraisers. That will give them a chance. Doja gets caught in the middle. Freiburg still alive inside. Has his double kill. And that's going to be a triple for him now. Can he pick up the quad? He's looking for it. He realizes Doja is there. Freiburg, he will do it. And he even has the pleasure of watching himself do it in the chat. So that's just a sick round from Freiburg. Got to give him some credit for that one. But I would like also like to give credit for whoever threw that flush, so he could actually do that. Exist. It was, yeah. It was pretty much... He would have been screwed unless that flush happened, pretty much. So, he can just go and thank Exist for those for most of those frags. Uh, well, hopefully he did afterwards. And NIP not even hesitating a little bit. They're 3-0, and already in the fourth round, they've decided to go for a double-up setup, which is something that... 
I think is just, I mean, it's it's been tested so many times, right? It's such a powerful setup on the CT side of those two. Yeah, it, yeah, it really it is. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, Plain you need to have your offers hitting their shots, otherwise it's kind of futile, but yeah, normally it's a really strong setup. And that's a bit of a weird smoke, actually. It seems like they're predicted for us playing that position. Of course, he's going to be charging into the middle and actually will get a kill. He's not afraid at all. Even with the AWP, it could be pretty expensive if he ends up losing it. But uh, as it is, it turns out just fine for an IP. Exist is the only one to go down and get right. We'll pick up two kills. Right now, we're looking at four and oh, and this is just a, a fantastic start for an IP. I mean, especially being on the t CT side, this is everything they wanted. Markolov. Waiting down the middle. They are going to be boosting up, and Markolov actually was expecting that. And they don't get the kill. I mean, either way, nobody picks up a kill, but that was an interesting boost from NIP. It wasn't the your standard, as you say, Vendetta and Noah Tower. It was just it was just a boost down the middle. That was actually a re I, really scary boost to watch as well. I was certain that Markolov would pick up that frag. Yeah, me too. Adrian out here. He's going to go down to exist, and... Quick return, but then if you Flaren and uh, Freiburg, oh sorry, Forrest coming in with the kills, that double up setup being put into play. Kucha and Markolov are left alone. Right now it's a two on three. They have plenty of time to make something happen, but they're moving towards the one bomb site where if Flaren is still holding, and he has a lot of health to work with. And an AWP. Markolov tries to crouch in. Good grenade comes out here from Fiflaren. He's going to soften off Markolov a little bit. 50 seconds left. And Markolov goes down, leaving Kucha in a one on three. A little bit of burn damage on Tufi Flaren, but not enough to actually take him down. Not sure what Kucha can do at this point. He's going to have to get two kills, put the bomb down, and then still win a one-on-one. -on -one. Quite a lot to uh, to ask for right now. Especially because the clock's also running down here. Tufi Flaren is trying to stay safe, and I think that's a smart choice. And he's going to pick up the eventual kill here. Kucha resting right there. It's going to be five and zero. I mean, Hellraisers, what went wrong that round for them? Uh, well, they got the early pick on long, but then a nice retake from NIP to take over long again with XS and Fiflarn, I think. And, um, you know, you need to really have a con have control of either short or long, so they opted to retake long, and that paid off. Yeah, it really did. And I think the reason why they opt to take over long instead of leaving that open is because they have the hop, which you can basically play from long and yeah. hold off short for a pretty long time while you have Freiburg around the spawn basically or exist or forest whoever rotates around to basically throw nades up there and buy time also they were positioned so that they had such a sh shorter way to long than they had for short so also yeah. kind of made sense from that perspective as well I think Hellraisers need to start getting back into this game here I mean 5 and 0 is already such a good start for an IP that's kind of now or never Adrian with a really great opening onto uh, get right over on long that's what they need but they need even more right now still a 4 on 4 Fiflaren is down here and he can kind of do this safely because of the smoke that's up he's just pretending there's a temporary wall down towards pit and in a way there is and when it goes away he's all the way up on the A bomb side here exists spraying down he's gonna pick up Angel Kucha does get the return now Fiflaren's kind of alone on the bomb side and he misses one shot they're wrapping up from behind him he's gonna have to do this quick or it's not gonna happen at all Fiflaren third strike and he's out leaving Freiburg alone comes up from short was gonna take down Kucha still a one on two here bomb will be planted Adrian down there Freiburg looking for another clutch here going for it on Kucha or sorry on Doja he's very low on health Freiburg but one headshot from the AK is going to be enough. And Dosha is just trying to hide for a little bit. He will take down Freiburg. And it's going to be Dosha with a triple. Nicely done here from Dosha. Even though Freiburg almost stole that round. Yeah. If we just don't think about the whole Freiburg episode, which was epic. Uh, there, That was a prime example of a situation where the NIP didn't have control of either short or long. So, you know, it ended up in a situation where if Lauren was just caught between... Like people coming from both ways, and there's no way you can really survive the situation unless you're like Kenny S or like Guardian. one of those type of players. Yeah. yeah, those are the only few players that can actually survive in these situations. Uh, well, at least at least Hellraiser's has managed to pick it up. They did lose four members, so their economy is still looking pretty bad. And IPS isn't great either. So whoever wins this round is probably going to get another round for free. And uh, the, the terror side needed a lot more than NIP do at this point. Forest up here by the scaffolding, which is really cool because if they come through the middle here, they're gonna be they're gonna be looking at uh, at Forest and Freiburg. He's not just you know admiring the wall; he's getting ready to strike. Great flashbangs come through, and actually, that's gonna commit a lot more members to the middle here. 
Hot flash in, but it's not Freiburg that comes out on top. It's Angel who does that. Yeah, that was all baited by HR. And Exis does still get the return. Even though they actually tried to flash Exis, then he just decided to hold down mouse one and point at the, at the, the entrance to the gate there. And that works out really, really well. Uh, it seems like the B-bomb site's the weaker spot here with Forest inside, and then Exist can easily get smoked off. And in fact, he will get smoked off here. Uh, really standard play coming out here from Hellraisers. If they can make it happen, Exist is going to get flashed through. Markolov goes down. They need not just to kill Exist or at least keep him up. They need to kill Forest right here, and that's going to happen. Adrian just running and gunning, and now they should be able to put down the bomb, and it will be a 3-on-3 three -three retake for NIP. Who has the advantage right now? Uh, Hellraisers do. I mean, yeah. B site retake, always hard, task two. Especially Hard with team. the after plant position Doja's gotten himself into. That's going to be so hard for NIP to do anything about it if he plays it correctly. Yeah, and he doesn't even wait to let them check the corner. He actually pushes the takes the one down before that even happens. And now get right. Yeah, he realizes I'm not going to be able to find Doja in time to also retake the bomb site, so he's going to fall back. So that was it. That was the key position right there for Doja in that three on three attempted retake, which will give another round to Hellraisers, but NIP saved two rifles, and that probably means they can force up on the rest. They will. That's for sure. Is that now, you say that with, with great confidence, is it because it's NIP, or do you think any team would have no. done this? Well, most, most of the teams would do that with the situation they were in, like, considering the money situations, considering the where, you know, they know that Hellraisers Hell don't have a lot of money either, and that they could buy, like, pretty much almost full buy. So, you know, it made sense they have an op and everything. Freiburg down here in the middle, trying to look through the smoke, but he can't actually see anyone. That smoke is just a little bit too thick. Over on long, though, it seems like Fifaren has a great chance to shut this push down. They don't have any ops on the other side. They're going to try and sneak through, and Fifaren actually doesn't take the shot immediately. Now he's going to peek up and actually overpeaks, I think, the position, walking up very far. Grenade to follow. He's going to go down. That's Adrian with the opening kill, and that's a big missed opportunity. Doja's going to take down Exist, and now it's a 5 on 3. Freiburg, nice shot midair onto Angel, but is it going to be enough? Gerrite coming out on long here, and... Freiburg again. Actually, that was a team kill. Kucha goes down to Adrian, and now it's looking great. Freiburg picks up another triple, and they're going to go for the straight defuse here. Doja can't really stop it. He's trying, but Gerai will save it. And Freiburg gets the balloons and the confetti inside that bomb <laughs> and making it 6-2. and two. That was, that was clumsy. Show. Yeah, the Freiburg show, but also maybe a little bit clumsy from Hellraisers. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, Freiburg was able to sneak up so close and then, you know, made a lot of damage to the guy that planted the bomb and then there was a TK and then Freiburg just, like, headshot two guys with the USP, uh, the P2000, dealing a lot of damage. And now Hellraisers have, what, pistols and one AK? This is, this is another one of those Hellraisers buys, right, where you're just thinking... What did, what why the did they hell? do this? But I guess at least, I mean, actually, Doja does have enough money to buy anyway. He's sort of just, you know, limited Equalizing. his economy. Yeah, so it's not, it's not as crazy as we've seen in the past. Yeah, what's weird, though, when they do decide to do something like this, uh, why wouldn't they send Doja out first to try to get an easy pick? Or an easier pick, I guess, than with pistols? I can't answer that question. I mean, I agree. This, I think that's, that's Why don't like you have the answers I'm looking for? Yeah, because if they got the kind of entry they just did on get right, you know, there would have been a, yeah. a bigger opening. Now instead, it's you know, just Markolov on his on his lonesome here. Yeah, and worst case scenario, uh, everyone gets to turn with the AK, right? <laughs> Sharing is caring. So if Doja actually manages to not get a pick when peeking out, someone else can have a go at it. So you have five opportunities actually. I can understand him buying an AK and an armor from the point of view where now he has the same money as his teammates. Yeah. But at the same time, that's money that could have been used later on in this half as well. So that, That's also, also a good point. But then again, they might end up in a situation where it's still only going to be Doja who's able to afford anything. So they might end up with another wonky buy, but I guess in, in this kind of situation, when you're down as much as Hellraisers are, you might want to save onto everything you get, can. 7 and 2. They need to stop the bleeding here, Hellraisers. Puffy Flaron is going to split Kucha wide open, and that's going to be a 5 on 4 now. And this, is, this is already such a good half for NIP. It really feels like Hellraisers is having such a tough time stabilizing.
Well, there. I mean, as we've seen so far, it's come down to pretty close rounds, where uh, it's it's been clutch situations, and NIP has been able to come on top on most of those. They're gonna keep Angel away from from short as well. Right? He's actually gonna double up on the aggression. I guess that Molotov got extinguished uh, by a smoke there. But this is still a two on five. So, yeah, right, it has been a lot of clutch situations, but now it feels like NIP are actually doing even better. Angel comes in with a kill and does go down to Forest, so this time no clutch happening. Freiburg currently doing really well ratio-wise at 12-3-3, but Exist is top fragging at 14 kills. And on the other team, I mean, we have Markov on one kill. That's obviously not good enough. No, it's going to nope. be hard to, hard to beat Nip if everyone's not contributing. So that's obviously an issue for Hellraisers. Maybe we can pick it up as as we start to close out the first half. Well, it's pretty clear NIP already have accomplished maybe even more than they could expect to on this first half. So for Hellraisers to to have a you know realistic shot at a comeback, how many rounds do you think they need? Six. So I would say seven. <laughs> but Nine. I guess I'm I'm more pessimistic than you. No, oh, six is okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Natsu's called it. Six is fine. Yeah, we'll I mean... It. Oh, it's a nice shot from Viflaro and goes for a second one and we'll pick it up as well. And then the USPS, nicely done. I mean, it's an eco round, sure, for Hellraisers, but there's no hesitation in those kills. That puts him at tw 10, 1, and 3, so pretty good job from Viflaro moving into the 12th round. And if they want to get six, I mean, at this point, man, that a seven is already too late. So the best they can do is, is six here. We'll see if it's going to happen at all. Mm. I think um, the thing is that on CT, I mean, this this map is regarded as T-sided, but if you happen to win the right rounds, 10 rounds on CT is doable. Oh, yeah. That's a, I think that's the case for a lot of maps, though, that are, if you look at Overpass, for instance, although that might be too new to really label us either a CT side or a T-sided, but I guess it comes down to if you're good on the CT side, you can easily get on a roll and pick up quite a few rounds. But I think it's going to be hard for Hellraisers to replicate what NIP are doing just now. Yeah. Early on, the trade in the middle with uh, the NOA tower going on. Freiburg went down, Exist picked up the kill. So he got the short end of the stick this time, Freiburg. And over by the car on long, it's Viflaren holding with an AWP, which is great because he still has Get Right down in the pit. So Hellraisers are eventually going to go for a bit of a split push towards the A-bomb side. You can see them stacking up out towards long. If Get Right goes down, that leaves Viflaren in an awkward position. And actually, great flashbang comes in again here. Get Right in some trouble, and they're coming very close. They're going to take him down. And now Viflaren has a choice to make. He's going to have to move, and he goes up in the A-bomb side, which might be a good idea. It's still a 4-3. 30 seconds left for Hellraisers. And NIP... Right now, they're not in such uh, bad positions after all. Might be able to control this bomb side anyway, especially if you're landing that shot. Doja goes down, and now it's a three on three. Exist fighting out. He's going to be dropped, and that leaves you flaring. Still up on the bomb site, and not quick enough to get that shot. Adrian will come up with a double kill and make it all the way to 9 3, but NIP can still buy. Yep, that was a bit of a domino effect there in the end of that round where. Kills from long, and then Kuchar uh, came in from short as well, getting that one more kill towards his spawn area. And then Tiflarn didn't really have much much to do there. Uh, he got left in kind of a similar situation as one of the yep. pre previous rounds where he kind of gets just sandwiched in. Yep. Well, in terms of openings, there's a really good one for Markolov, and it's going to be instantly returned by Dosha. So that's really unfortunate for, uh, for Hellraisers. I mean, if anything, right now, I feel like they need... They need a, a couple of stable rounds where they just pick off some good NIP members and, and manage to, to sort of close the round without too much of an issue. But as long as they're just trading like this, it will come down to even more clutch situations, which they haven't generally been winning too many of. Uh, also, this round is going to be important for both teams in terms of the score. Is looking at the money situation. Well, that was definitely a touchdown for uh, for Kutcher. I think Geron actually ran into that grenade, and Fuflaren is going to try and come back and defend here with the AWP. He misses the shot. He's going to have to try and fall back quick, and he will make it around the corner, but it's going to be another bomb plant, at least for Hellraisers. And I'm not sure why they're not holding either long or short right now. Great spray coming from Angel. Almost takes down two members, and they're just going to go hyper-aggressive on Freiburg and Exist, so that works out great. Now it's a one-on-four here for Fuflaren, and they're going to go hunting for him, but I mean... I, I don't know, I always try and think of, you know, as a sort of rule of thumb. If you, Once you put the bomb down, you, you try and want to hold either long or short. But this time they just went aggressive down CT spawn. 
yeah, I, probably some sound giveaways for them to opt to do that. I think the reason why yeah. they wouldn't peek towards long is simply because they don't really have any control over the position from Fiflarn. He could have jumped into pit, maybe, or, you know, he, and he still has an op, so it's a risky peek to do. So yeah. I can see why they wouldn't opt towards long, but spawn and catwalk obviously is an option as well, but they went pretty well for them just going with the, the heavy, heavy spawn investment. Now this three AWPs on Hellraisers is kind of a sign that they realize NIP has got to be ecoing and they just want to make this 9-6 if they can, and there's a good chance they will, but I'm wondering if they didn't buy all these orbs around too early, essentially, because... If, you know, you know, they've if they'd done it next round, NIP would have been full buy. Well, Kuchu can still drop for his teammates even if he dies, or even if they lose the round. And it's basically Markolov and Angel is going to be, or actually Markolov is probably going to be fine as well. It's probably just Angel who needs any sort of assistance if that happens. So I think they're going to be fine either way. Back into a, uh, a more interesting situation here for Hellraisers. They're trying to make the comeback happen, and Angel, he wanted to pick up that CSET 75, but he just couldn't. Kucha should be calling for backup pretty quick, but if Exist falls back here, then those just ready to pick it up and will get the kill. So unfortunate for NIP, who did trade early on. Now it's Freiburg hiding inside the B bomb site, and he has that Deagle in hand. He's a bit of a fan, isn't he, of that weapon? He is. And for good reason. I mean, that weapon is legit. <laughs> it's not seeing enough play, though, unfortunately, due to the CZ. Yeah, the CZ's uh, outperforming it at the moment. Now, if we flower, unfortunately, he's going to be the one defending here. And there's going to be a Molotov to force him out. And with the USP, not really a lot that he could have done. So 9-5 is going to be the scoreline for sure. Freiburg, maybe he can show some really cool one dig action. But no, Kucha's going to take him down with a leg shot. And it will be 9-5. Moving into the last round of the first half... Now, too, you you said earlier on six rounds might have been enough here, so maybe you're gonna you're gonna get your your wish once again. You've ordered it up <laughs> a couple of times already. Yeah, seems like I got my magic eight ball. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean nine six, it's it's still doable. It's still doable. Um, oh, down, nice shot. That hurts. <laughs> that really hurts. But then once again, Fuflaren is there with the return, and Kucha goes down. So yeah, Hellraisers they get the opening and then they instantly give it back again. And that's frustrating, but it's still pretty impressive to see Markolov do that. I'm actually surprised that we haven't seen Hellraisers try more for their B splits, because previously when we've seen them on Dust2, that's been more or less all of what they wanted to do. Yeah, and this time they they do sort of flash in there, and now they're also signaling that it might be a B split push flashbangs and everything else. We've found looking for an opening, but it, Markolov from the back is going to take him down. Now Geraint has an AWP picked up, and now... Maybe you're going to get your wish, um, Mandela, because, you know, they were shaping up for it, but because I, they actually had to go back and pick up the bomb, I think they're, now they're sort of hesitating a little bit. It's a three-on-three, yeah. three and look at Exist coming up from behind, but Markolov sees it coming. That's a huge kill for Markolov. He doesn't turn around like that. That's probably going to be the end of the round for uh, for Hellraisers. Now it's back into a three-on, oh, sorry, two-on-two. Two. There's a double kill on Get Right. There's a triple on Markolov, and Markolov is looking for the fourth kill, but instead he's just going to flash uh, Get Right back a little bit. We'll have to see. This two on two, especially with the bomb plant, especially because they have time to plant for long. Markolov. They could be holding pit if they wanted to. And it might burn them actually because Freiburg is about to make the rotation around too long. Yeah, and Angel goes down weirdly with the knife out. I'm wondering if he had some sort of mouse issue because that looked a little bit weird. Markolov is going to be waiting. Flash goes in. He's going to have to come up with an ace here to win it. And he's not going to make it happen. It's once again Freiburg saving NIP and getting the double kill. Good half is called. And we are at a 10-5 scoreline for the first half in this game. I mean, yep. NIP just the looking really good. Yeah, the, the Freiburg has been on point on this map, really. He's been winning a lot of rounds for his team. Even that last round, he made the perfect call of going long. And uh, um, Hellraiser's player, whoever was... Around long wasn't really committing himself enough for that for that spot, giving the advantage to Freiburg, and then, yep, that was round pretty much. It's unfortunate. It looked like Angel, like he had his knife out and he was just standing still for a while. So I'm not really sure what that was, um, but yeah. it definitely comes back to to bite them. Now Hellraisers must. They simply must win this pistol round. If they don't, uh, they might as well almost roll over and give up. Or of course they're not gonna, but um, that's gonna put NIP very close to a victory, I think. Well, yeah, considering the situation, they really do want to get that pistol around. Look or at the setup. 
Markolov yeah, here ahead. ready to flash out on long. And I don't really, I guess Doja's supposed to just back the hell out and it doesn't really matter if he gets flashed or not. But he, he's really committing himself to this push, so this could go wrong fast for Hellraiser's Dosha does go down. In the meantime, they also lose a man up in the A bomb side. Markov gonna get caught out here on long. This is looking horrible for Hellraisers, and that was certainly an interesting idea. But I, I felt like it was good up until the point where Dosha actually turned the corner down on long. Like as long as he was staying at the corner, and maybe it would have worked out a little bit better. Hmm, Dosha with uh, almost a double kill, but doesn't. Oh, sorry, Kucha almost with a double kill, but doesn't make it work. So. All the way back to 11-5. I mean, Natsu, what do you think that, that plan was out on long? What were the, what, what, how was that going to work out for them? Um, well, I don't think he... Like, Dosha should have probably been in a position where he could actually back off. And I think he actually made some sounds where NIP probably knew that he was somewhere around there. The reload sound, like he was reloading. Yeah. And if he decides to commit so heavily, he needs to have Markolov on board. So if Markolov can be at the corner or something to that effect, so he can actually put some pain back on the NIP members when, they, when they're when they just charging out, everyone's facing Doja. Yeah, and he needed more bullets, he needed a different weapon than the USP for that position as well, I think. Either that or a ZZ, right? Yeah. Always the CZ. And speaking of which, uh, Hellraisers actually have three of them in this round, and fortunately they're sort of stacked up towards the middle and towards the B-bomb site, and Markolov is the only one defending here. And Adrian does pick up a good kill, Markolov looking for more, and actually could have taken down Freiburg. And now, let's see if Kuchin can come up with a kill. He has another C set in hand, great grenade right onto him, and Freiburg still is alive. And in the middle, Fiflaren is fighting it out and getting himself some eco francs as well. Adrian stolen an AK, and maybe they can kill Fiflaren here if they're really good at it. Aiden will do it, but um, still, no chance of a victory here for Hellraisers. Well, best case scenario at this point is Adrian managing to save that AK, but I think the NIP members are already kind of searching for him. And they're out hunting, and I guess Exist is not really committed to the hunt, and everyone else is just sort of waiting around for a little bit, so it looks like Adrian at this point might be able to save the AK. That's good news, but still... They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to eco once more. I mean, before Hellraisers can realistically make a buy here, it should be around 13-5, where you can still make a comeback, I guess, but uh, not gonna be anywhere near easy for them. No, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> they've kind of dug themselves a hole. Yeah, kind of dug their, themselves a hole by dropping 10 rounds on, on their T side. So. Uh, yeah, it remains to be seen. They're probably not going to win this round. They might do some economical damage to NIP, which is obviously going to be nice in the long run. But, yeah, barring Adrian going crazy with that AK or Kutcher Angel or <laughs> going crazy with the CZ, I don't see Hellraiser just picking up this round. And this time they have almost the opposite stack going on. Instead of middle and B, they've gone for, uh, for short and, and A instead, so... See if that's gonna work out for them. Markolov is here and Freiburg just sprays down two people. He could have easily gone down then. Left on four points of health, but he's gonna survive. And now flashbang in. Kucha can't see a thing. He's gonna get taken down by Exist. Forest waiting in the middle. And does spot out Angel. So no dice at all here for uh, for Hellraisers. This is just all NIP all the way right now. Yep. Well, the thing is that uh, Hellraisers really wanted to get some economical damage done in that round and the round before. Unable to do so, though, so much. So um, that's also a problem for, for Hellraisers right now. Yeah. And so I they, think... Well, yeah, go on. Yeah, they need some clean clean rounds here. Build up their economy. Build up their confidence and go from there. In many ways, this is a do-or-die round, again, as we've seen on both Inferno and, and Nuke, that they ha kind of have to win this round because they're so heavily invested that if they lose this round, it's probably going to be match point for NIP. Yeah, a dust 2 CT is a bit of a gamble all the time. Like, you really, like, you sort of have to read your opponent on which side of the map are you going to put more... Um, emphasis on? Yeah, exactly, so... Right now, it seems like they have put the majority of their resources towards the A-bomb site, and they're not actually holding middle all that much. I guess Adrian is sort of, you know, coming back into it, and they have Kucha up in the window, so it's not a completely... Uh, failed mid hold here, but if NIP really commit to it, it could be that the two people inside the B bomb side are going to get sandwiched in. Still got 50 seconds left, and what are they actually going to do here? 
Markolov holding out on long. Doesn't get the shot, but they spot one guy jumping down as a CT. And that's a big indication, I think, for uh, for Hellraisers that something is up towards the speed bomb site. Kucha peeks out, doesn't get the kill. Spots V Flaren and finally will take him down. Can he get a second one? He will drop exist as well. Looking fairly decent right now, but they still have to deal with Get Right. The Molotov is holding him back. And then Get Right actually signaling, he shows himself with that smoke. Kucha gonna go down and Get Right's alone. One on two here. Charging into the bomb side, and he doesn't have the bomb right now. It's outside with 20 seconds left. He's going to jump up into the window and try and clutch this one on two, but it's not going to work out. Doja will take him down. That looked like it was a question of timing for NIP and Hellraisers both. Yeah. yeah. Um, go, ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> take it away. Take it away. All right. Kucher getting those two kills with the op. Really paid dividends in that round. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much what <laughs> I was going to allude to as well. Pretty much hampered the, all of NIP's push. And that was uh, pretty much it. Yeah, it always comes down to the first kills. <clears throat> that really make the difference, because if, if uh, your push is getting uh, slowed down like that, then you're going to be in all sorts of trouble. And this time, actually, the first kill goes to NIP. And look at what Get Right's hiding here. Angel's right underneath, and he must have heard Get Right dropping down. So that's a lot of information for Angel. If he can come up from behind and pick up a kill as they're pushing up short here, that's going to be huge. But Markolov misses the shot. Angel still trying to make it work. He can't catch Viflaren. And now the game is sort of up. Right now, Hellraisers are only really controlling uh, long, and that's not going to be enough here. NIP looking to take a 14th round, and a very good chance they're going to do this in a 3-on-5. In fact, not even sure Hellraisers are even interested any longer in trying to take it. They just want to save their guns. Yeah, but I'm not sure if they're going to be allowed to. If you look at Adrian and Markolov, they're pretty boxed in, so unless Angel is able to pick up Get Right, I think NIP have a good chance at actually just taking all of the Hellraisers member out. Yeah, at least Get Right goes down, but they lose the AWP on Markolov, one of the really expensive weapons. They lost the, the other AWP in the previous round, so... They're sort of bleeding money and rounds, and they can't afford to do that. They will at least save the last two rifles here, which is... I can't even really call it good news. We're at 14 to 6, and it's it's very <laughs> close to being match and map point for NIP. Yeah, and Hellraisers having just won that round bef before that one uh, means that now that they lost, they resetted the economic situation, meaning they really have no one to work with. But they're doing the typical Hellraisers thing, and that's... Buying up, and you can't really blame them really either. But Forrest, yeah, picking up Angel through the smoke. <laughs> really, really cheeky play from Forrest. Just gets the timing right. Get right's gonna take down Adrian, who was trying to push in aggressively. Markov in the middle will find a scout kill on Freiburg at least. And actually jumps and almost takes down Exist. So this is not half bad in terms of uh, of a retaliation from Hellraisers. But if it's gonna be enough, is a different question altogether. I mean. NIP just seemed determined to, to win it. And they are the defending champs. You know, they, they won the last week of, of the Case King of the Hill. And they're looking to see if they can do it once more. Yeah. Then by the looks of, looks of things, it seems like they are going to do it. Yeah, and I, I think if Markov gets that kill onto Exist, ex if Exist doesn't survive with 2 HP, that does a lot for Hellraisers, actually, because they don't have to have, well, they don't have to be as spread out as they are currently. Yeah, okay. good thing for uh, Hellraiser they have they have two guys on B now, so... Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, if they didn't check for Kucha, that could have worked <laughs> out, but they just walk right in. I mean, NIP... Direct. Yeah, exactly. They're not really leaving much to, to chance, are they? Nope. Not really. This is really picture, like picture-perfect play from NIP. Uh, taking no chances and uh, executing well. Um, hit, hitting their shots and winning the crucial rounds and... Really, not just giving any room for Hellraisers here. No, it's going to be a 15th round here for NIP, which leaves it at match and map point here for uh, for the Swedish Ninjas. And winning them another 750 euros, giving 250 to Hellraisers, is uh, is what it's down to. Markolov. Kind of in a hard spot here. He's going to go down as well. Not even, not even allowed to save the scout. And now Hellraisers actually not only... Are they about to lose? They also have no money at all to work with, so they're buying a bunch of scouts. And yes, a, yes, a I wanted one. to see five scouts, yes. please. <laughs> uh, and everybody go pick me now. <laughs> everybody go pick yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Line up. Oh, or queue um, up. Only a couple of them here in Forest. <laughs> he has a weapon that's slightly more powerful than the scout's going to take down the first kill on Doja, but we have to still appreciate the five scout buy here. There's, there's a value to that, right? Yeah, you have to approve of their committal to, to the scouts. I just wish they would have gone full YOLO and actually had five people picking mid. 
Yeah, and that was where they make the sick comeback. Markolov and Kucha both picking up a headshot here and actually making it a 4 on 3. I mean, this would be a great way to spark a comeback, wouldn't it? Yeah, and I mean, we were running a show here too, so it's good for the spectators. Yeah. <laughs> Please, Freiburg, you know, just go back in time and throw it a little bit so we can bring it closer. <laughs> Angel. What was Angel doing there? I really don't know. Markolov is also going to go down. Forrest with the AWP just uh, walking all over the map and getting kills left and right. He's going to pick up the last one. Four kills for him. 16-6 victory for NIP. And they win the Case King of the Hill here for the sixth week. That's the second time that the NIP has won it. And they're going to be back in the upcoming week as well, where we're going to find some new teams to uh, for them to battle it out with. But for tonight, guys, we're actually out of content. So I want to thank all of you for tuning in. A big thanks to everyone who's been subscribing. Uh, it helps us out so much. So we love you guys for doing it. Big thanks to Natu as well. I hope you guys are going to go and follow Natu on Twitter just to, uh, you know, see what he's up to as well. That's Natu CSGO, right? Uh, yeah, and follow my Twitch channel too. Yeah, exactly. And what's the, what's the shit channel? you got to tell us quick. Uh, it's twitch.tv slash ultra issue. That's hard to... I'll just write down mobile. All right. Yeah, do that, and I'll put the link in the chat. I think that's much Channel easier, right? Yeah, I need to get across. I have 4.6k followers, so we need to get that past 5k. All right, look, so guys, <laughs> that's it. Go and go and follow uh, Natsu's Twitch channel. He does actually stream a lot, so you should definitely go and do it. And even has been known on occasion to uh, to go for some casting as well on his own. So definitely don't forget <laughs> about that, guys. Um, big thanks to everyone for following, and uh, and we'll be back tomorrow. If you want to help out the channel, what you can do is you can stick around and watch a few adverts. So we're just gonna put it on, you know, a few adverts running, and you guys can just put it on low quality or muted or whatever you like, and it's still gonna help us out. So if you want to do that. We definitely appreciate it. But now, if you're not going to do any of that, then go and play some Counter-Strike and enjoy yourselves. We'll be back actually this weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday, with the SLTV Star Series Grand Finals. So we're going to be covering that right here from the channel. We'll be back soon, and stay tuned.